Now we finished with the disc binding. I think I'll take a minute to uh, explain what we've exposed. Better illustrate something I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this process. This book was originally sewn on three recessed cords. The way you do that is you take your folded signatures and uh, a saw and cut a kerf into the back of all the books. You do it just deep enough to uh, make sure you uh, sever every folded uh, page in the, uh, the spine of every folded page in every signature. You also use a saw with a wide enough saw blade and a cord that's thin enough so that when the thread is sewn it comes out of a hole, goes over the cord, goes back in the same hole onto the next and then it's pulled tight and that pulls the uh, cord down into the re uh, recess. Uh, fairly straightforward, very common. Uh, the only thing wrong with it is the cords are only cords. Uh, they're only uh, bits of twisted fiber. There's a piece of one. And the tensile strength is not that great. It's about as, as good as one would expect, something like that. Um, it's not going to last over time. That's why both boards were detached. These cords, the end of the cords, after they're sewn, they are permanently attached to the boards uh, prior to covering them over with the binding. Well, that's fine, but at the end of the day, the thing taking the real stress is at the joint, and with flexing and tension, etc., over the years, uh, this isn't going to last that long. So, I'm personally, I'm not a big cord guy. Uh, I don't by and large, sew with uh, cord. I sew instead with cloth tape. Now, with cords, depending on how many, of course, you have, you simply need one hole per cord because, as I said before, the thread comes out the hole, goes over the cord, and goes back in the same hole. So that's only one hole hole per cord required. Uh, before we uh, go further, I should mention, uh, I'm sure you've seen the section on uh, general sewing, but to uh, refresh, the top and bottom holes are called kettle stitch holes. They are basically entry and exit points for the needle. You'll be going back and forth, back and forth, and with every signature you'll be entering through one of these holes and exiting through the other. It alternates section to section, obviously. So those are kettle stitch holes. Those are givens. That's, that's already established. For sewing on tape, first of all, determine, depending on the size and nature of the book, etc., uh, uh, determine how many tapes you're going to want to sew the book on. Also, one of the factors in the um, decision is with every additional tape, that's an additional set of movements you have to make with each individual signature. It adds to the time required for sewing the entire book greatly. So, we need two uh, for something like this. I'm going to sew it with two tapes. Another thing you want to make, since you need extra holes to accommodate the tape, normally you want to make as few new holes as possible, which means use the original kettle stitch holes at the top and bottom. That's fine. You don't need to do anything extra for those. For these holes, assuming the tape is positioned at the more or less the top and bottom, 
Uh, the tape I'll be using is about three-quarter inches, so let's say right about there I'll need a set of holes, and this will be my the uh, starting hole for my second tape, so you come in like about so, and there is where you'll need another set of holes. How do you make holes in to accommodate uh, uh, tapes prior to sewing? There's many ways. Uh, the way I prefer, I think, is the quickest, easiest, and most dummy proof. If you do it correctly, you're going to wind up with an exact straight line and there's no chance of a miscue. Um, the problem I have with cutting into the spine, as was originally done, this book has already been rounded. We want to retain the rounded nature of the signatures, because when it's sewn, we won't have to do much work to reform the back of the book. So you want to retain, you don't want to flatten these uh, uh, slight distortions of the spine out. And you more or less need to do that if you cut or saw new holes in the uh, uh, back. You also tend to go too deep. That's almost inevitable. And that's a problem. If you don't go deep enough, then you have to take your needle every time and try to find the hole and, and go through the remaining uncut layers of signature, uh, it's a nuisance. So I'll explain how I do it. Uh, it's very straightforward and uh, it's just how I do it. But we'll do that in just one minute. I wanted to talk a bit about the cleaning process, the disbinding process. Here are all the bits and pieces from uh, the cleaning process. I could have spent a lot of time before I started disbinding this. I could have spent a lot of time trying to flick all of the tiny little bits of uh, dried adhesive off before I actually started taking the pages apart. I chose not to. Sometimes it's the quickest and easiest, but in this case, typically, uh, it was far easier to simply release each by cutting the threads, release each signature, and clean the signature spine one at a time with just your fingers or if there was um, any particular residue left on the sides, you can use a palette knife. At any rate, uh, it, it all comes out in the wash if you do it one signature at a time and really that's the most straightforward. That's the quickest way. Further, I have these two original headbands, blue and white. I'm going to set them aside. I am not going to clean them and restore them as we discussed earlier. Primarily because, not that it would take that much time to clean and restore, you just soak them in water and, and uh, get rid of all the residue. It would also brighten them up considerably. Uh, the reason I'm not going to retain these is they're just too small, uh, too short. Uh, I can replace them with blue and white stripe, uh, come close to the original pattern, the original intention. Uh, blue and white uh, uh, homemade headbands uh, that are appreciably larger format, which will give more adhesion uh, surface. Uh, hopefully that will mean it'll they'll last longer and, and be uh, be more substantial in the uh, redone book. The other thing I'm going to set aside is the uh, spine. I talked about this a little prior. Uh, it still needs to be cleaned considerably. This can be a very picky job, a uh, very delicate job 
best I can say by uh, how extreme you get with cleaning, if something is just not coming up any further, you just can't get any more out without a real danger to the integrity of the underlying uh, uh, leather, then stop right there. If it's hard to get off with, uh, with the intention of getting it off, then it's probably going to be stable enough to have new adhesive put on it and uh, then that gets reattached uh, to the new spine. The point is, get as much off as reasonably possible. And of course, also, there's a time factor, so you want to uh, be judicious in how much time you spend on any given uh, project in deference to your client and their budget. At any rate, I'll get to that later. That's something you can do while you're waiting for something to dry or whatever. So we'll clean this up, uh, and I'll show you how to uh, make holes, and then we'll get on to tissue repair. In the whole book, all of these internal signatures are sound. Uh, they don't even need uh, remedial reinforcement with tissue. However, the first and last signature, and that's very typical, uh, the uh, outer signature sheet needs to uh, be reinforced with light tissue. It's not all the way compromised, but it's marginally compromised, so we'll use light tissue. It's not going to uh, require that much. We also have three loose leaves on both the front and back, one being the uh, frontispiece, done typically on plate uh, paper, engraving paper, which is by nature thicker, which is why it has to be, uh, originally it was felt it had to be just tipped in. It's not part of the regular printing process to make a signature. It's independent of that, done on special presses, etc. At any rate, we will guard uh, these three individual sheets, I'm sorry, these two individual sheets, onto the signature. I'll show you how that's done. And at the very end, we need to deal with the uh, front fly leaf and the rear fly leaf. That's done a little differently. It's still a guarding process, but we don't use, normally, we don't use uh, Japanese or long fiber tissue uh, paper. We use uh, a more decorative paper because the cut between the paste down and the independent fly, there's going to be a gap when you put it all together, inevitably a gap. Did you want it to, so you have a block of, in this case, dominantly red or maroon uh, decorative paper and more decorative paper in the gutter. Do you want white? That's going to be a little garish. It's going to draw your attention to the fact that this isn't uh, normal. This isn't how it was originally intended to look. Better aesthetically, if this color uh, beneath the, the two blocks could be something less eye-catching. So we'll take a look in our uh, drawer of scrap um, offcuts for art paper and see if we can't come up with something uh, uh, maroon or whatever. Even black would be less eye-catching because it, it'll just wind up being a tiny strip and the inner hinge, but it's best if you can pretty much match. We'll cover all that later. For the time being, uh, we'll punch new holes in preparation for sewing and do the, uh, do the uh, guarding and tissue reinforcement on uh, just a couple of signatures, etc. And that'll all happen once I clean this up.